That's right. This is Chip Baker once again with the Real Dirt Podcast, giving you the lowdown on everything ganja and getting you directly in touch with all the cannabis sewers in the industry. And on today's episode, we have another lost episode, lost episode, lost episode of El Jefe from Little Hill Farms. Now, uh, it seems like I'm on an organic kick here, but uh, wow, man, you know, I do really love the taste of organic weed. It might not grow as fast. It might not grow as big for most people. But man, you take pride in the ganja and you make it organic and flush it appropriately and grow the plant appropriately, you cannot have a better tasting product. And join us on this episode where me and uh, Hefe speak about organic cannabis, the new Trinity County, California cannabis laws. El Jefe has a certified license for a legal 10,000 square foot grow in Trinity County. He's got a really nice greenhouse operation there where he grows some of the finest of the finest grade cannabis. We talk strains, we talk a little bit about all of it, man. You know, what I really admire about Hefe is, and this is a rare quality, man, I've only seen this in a handful of growers, a handful of commercial growers out there, is they really care about the weed. And when you ask them about how much yield per square foot, they might not necessarily know. Or when you're in their garden, you point out a plant and say, how big is that? They don't think about it that way. And every other garden I go into and I look at something, I ask about it. The first thing that comes out is yield weight size, yield weight size, yield weight size, you know. And I don't get that in El Jefe's garden. When I'm up at uh, Little Hill Farms, I don't get that. He talks about the quality of the cannabis, what's wrong with it, why it didn't grow perfect and, you know, the, all the garden looks completely perfect, but he's such a mad scientist there that none of it is perfect. No, 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 it's just not right. But man, along the way, he grows some really, really, really awesome ganja. And today I'm actually smoking on some of his ganja, OG Twist, which is a OG Kim dog, I think. And man, this is some of the greasiest tastiest stoniest weed out there and you know it's grown under the full sun in trinity county last year outdoor and it is still holding its own in flavor and the look of it's gone away a little bit but man this is really mm, wow this is really really quality cannabis and and you know that's what i really feel like the the new market needs to embrace is I am tired of hearing people say, I'm going to be the biggest. Let's hear I'm going to be the best. Let's hear I grow the healthiest cannabis. And I'm calling bullshit if you say, oh, it's economics and we can't make money if we don't. No, it's bullshit, dude. You absolutely can. I've seen it happen where people do great and have great commercial operations and sell even more because they focus on the quality of the cannabis. They focus on the quality of the ganja. They focus on the flavor. They focus on the nug size. They focus on the bag look. They do it all. It's not just about making a dollar at the end of the day. Now, hey, man, I'm the first person to say, make that money. Get your money. Get paid. I am totally, you know, an entrepreneur. I'm into selling anything and building anything and manufacturing anything, you know, for profit. Right? Good profit where everybody is excited about the deal they got. And you can do that in cannabis and still have quality weed, not sacrifice the quality of your product for the economics of it all. Now, I understand that there are people out there that their sole goal is pounds per square meter, grams per square foot. And I I get that, 
Right. I am fascinated with the technology. I talked to Josh over there at Three Alight, and man, his techniques are like some of the most superior techniques, and he has the biggest, most consistent gardens I've ever, ever seen. Man, that's his trip, right? He is growing three plus pounds of light every single light, every single time, right? And, and you know, this technology, his technique, that's his trip. And I completely understand that. And he grows fine, fine ganja. Little Hill, however, is kind of the opposite. El Jefe is kind of the opposite side of that. Is he's trying to grow the finest caliber of ganja all organically and still make money and still be profitable and still remain in the business. Same coin, maybe even two sides of the coin. Maybe it's the same side of the coin. I don't know. But they're both growing ganja. And they both have a focus. Most people's focus, however, is yield and economy. And right now, I'm just begging you growers out there. Man, go find someone else's finest ganja. This is my ask. This is what I'm going to ask everybody. If you're a, a grower out there, no matter if you're growing for yourself or if you're growing on a large scale for somebody else, I want you to go on a little quest with me. Now, I do this quest every day of my life. I'm looking for the finest ganja who's got it. I want you growers to go out there and start looking for better ganja than what you think you grow. And you know there's somebody out there that grows better weed than you. And if you don't think that or you don't have access to that, you should start to look for it, man, because there's something that you can do more than likely to twist your technique just slightly, right? Right? And you may say to yourself and your employees, we grow great weed, but man, you know that little voice in the back of your head that says something like, oh, wow, this burns a little hot. This doesn't ash right. There's no flavor. The color's off. There's no crystal. Right? Not all weed can be great AAA top quality. But if you know what that is, then you'll be a lot closer to being able to actually reproduce it consistently for yourself. If you get under the arrogance and the ego of, I got the best weed, my weed's the best, I grow the best weed all the time, you're just full of shit. It's a plant. You can't grow the best weed all the time. Somebody is always doing it better than you. And I really encourage you and challenge you growers, commercial growers out there, man, the the medicine men's of you, the three lights of you, the Vertos of you, all of you guys out there, and I'm not calling anybody out. Those are some really great organizations out there. Make it better. Make it better. Don't just try to cut costs. Absolutely put your heart and soul into it and try to make a really fine, fine product and not just 3.2 Coors Light. There's my little soapbox thing. I love you guys, and I want you to subscribe to the Real Dirt podcast on iTunes. Please go to iTunes right now and subscribe if you haven't already. Pick up your phone, press the podcast app application, and subscribe to the Real Dirt podcast with Chip Baker. If you don't want to do that, or you just want to check me out on the realdirt.com, check me out on therealdirt.com. And you can play any episode right there. You don't have to download it. No special anything needed. You can play it right on your computer, right on your phone. Got some great information in there, great blogs. or some other great episodes. If you haven't listened to everything, there's probably something else in there. And, uh, hey, drop us a comment, man. PM us uh, on our Facebook account or on our Instagram account. Join our Instagram account or our Facebook account, The Real Dirt Podcast, and, uh, Yeah, if there's something out there that you want to hear or you want to know about or you want to talk shit about, yeah, just let us know. Make a comment below. So here we go. El Jefe, Little Hill Farms, The Real Dirt, Lost Episode. Once again, you have reached The Real Dirt. Today is dirt. It's live from Humboldt on a rainy fall day. It's harvest season, so it means it's raining on the coast. And uh, that's a typical weather pattern for us. It's been quite dry in the North Coast the past several years. It's been a good fall. It's been a normal weather pattern this year. And on today's dirt, I have El Jefe from Little Hills Farms back again almost a year to the date of uh, his first 
appearance on The Real Dirt. Say hello, Jefe. Hello, everybody out there. Little Hill Cultivators. Mm, little Hill Cultivators. What did I call you? Little Hill Farms. That's a There is a Little Hill Farms. That's another little joke operation. We don't know who those jackasses are. <laughs> oh, I'm, sure, I'm sure they're nice people, but... You know, you're always uh, quite amusing and quippy with words. Tell me how you came about Little Hill... The listeners out there might not understand the lingo or know what's... Well, give us some background here. There just happens to be a little hill. I own a little piece of it on my property, but there's this little hill that kind of like isolates us from the rest of the valley where we are. And uh, it's just this little hill sticking up out of flat land that kind of gives us a little privacy down at the our end of the valley. And uh, I also happen to grow up in a town called El Cerrito in the East Bay, which means Little Hill, which is named after Albany Hill. There's like a play with words here, too. Let's talk about that, because it's a little more sophisticated with that. Please elaborate. Oh, am I, am I the... Yeah, I know other people have read this into it. Well, you know, here in Northern California, people refer to their outdoor cannabis crops as going to the hill, working on the hill. Sure. Right? Sure. And not that it's always comes out as an arrogant way, but like, you know, people are real proud about their hills, Right. And so I, th- I thought you were, were saying it was a, a little hill, right? And making fun of, of that whole hill culture. No, I was not. I, I appreciate the hill culture. I'm a big part of it. It's, it's how you kind of live out there. It's people uh, explain things by just saying, oh, that's how it is on the hill or, mm-hmm. you know, going out to the hills or, you know, they do things this way on that hill and they do things the other way on that hill. And, you know, that's a tweaker hill. They grow good ganja on that hill or... They ain't got any water on that hill. No, no water on that hill. No sun on that hill. No road to that hill. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like a great... I'm going to get the guitar in here. Mm. There ain't no mm. road on that hill. Water on that hill. Sun uh, on that hill. <laughs> yeah, cheap land on that hill. Cheap land <laughs> on that hill. Yeah. I was reading a little more esoterically until your name and your branding. Um, to literal practical type of person to <laughs> go that deep into it uh there it is so yeah man little hill is a ten thousand square foot certified licensed farm in trinity county california one of the first licensed farms in the state you got your license earlier this year definitely one of the first in trinity county but they've barely <laughs> even issuing them humboldt you right. know, trinity was ahead of humboldt in that regards yeah they've issued a handful by now and uh I actually had it last year, technically, by the end of last year. They licensed me after the season for last year. Oh, because they need that tag money. Because they need the money and uh, get the program started. And, you know, at, at this point, I'm neck deep. and There's no turning back now. All right. All right. So last year, you got your permits right at the end of your season. Right. right? It took all year to get it together. And this year, you've had permits from the beginning all the way to the end. More or less, right, yeah. Right, yeah. right. How's that changed how you uh, were in operation as opposed well, to last year? I changed my farm operation a little bit, trying to get prepared for the kind of the new recreational legal California market. Mm-hmm. Everything's in greenhouses now. It's been all spring bringing greenhouses down to the valley floor. That's one of the regulations. It has to be inside. No, it's just a better spot than a hillside to be building greenhouses. Oh, yeah, totally. It's, okay, uh, I get it. more sun. Everything's easier right there in the valley floor and as opposed to, you know, going up a hill and pumping water up a hill and mm-hmm. all these other things. It just made more sense. It's uh, it's not private. You're kind of out in the open there. But since I had a license, I felt it was time to do that. And I didn't need to be hidden up, you know, behind the trees up on the hill. Mm-hmm. And uh, I mean, that's why I bought the place originally all those years ago, because I knew, you know, that was the spot. I just didn't I just didn't feel comfortable building greenhouses down there at, at that point. Mm-hmm. Yeah, right. Because uh, it's right by the road. And it's right by the road. Anybody on the ridge can see what's going on. Mm-hmm. The regulated know. world has brought you into easier living, so to speak. You're not hiding up in the hills. A little bit. Finally investing mm-hmm. in building a house on my property and getting living conditions up. You know, they're always pretty decent, but it's going to be nice to have a house. I got mountains of firewood split and ready to go, and it'll be nice. Oh, hell yeah, man. Little, uh... Northern California getaway. Yeah. Right. Except yeah. Uh, you guys are there all the time. You're 10,000 square feet of greenhouse. So it's all greenhouse. All greenhouse this year. Yeah. All light depth. Um, yeah. Light depth and then replant. Mm-hmm. Depth it again or let it finish full term. And, you know, two poles. 
hopefully I can add heat here next year and maybe get three pulls. That's just, uh, I like the quality flower that comes out as opposed to growing seven pound, eight pound plants. Yeah, absolutely. Small and have, plants. and having it come in, you know, with everybody else in, in October, nice to pull a crop off and get your bills paid in the middle of summer as opposed to waiting on it all. So professional light depper, how many crops you get out this year? Two. Two light depth crops in one full season. One depth. One depth in a full season. Yeah. You vegged the full season though. Yeah. Mm hmm. Yeah. So you put your plants in your greenhouse and you've got lights in there? Yeah, uh, string lights. String lights. And you just string light, veg the plants, and then... Uh, veg them up in the spring, veg them up in April, mm -hmm. flip them in April, hopefully, if you're, mm -hmm. you're on time. we it was, a, it was a rough winter last year, so uh, we were a little behind construction-wise, but uh, ideally, you know, flip them in May sometime, because of where I am, it's a little colder than most spots. Flip them, you change the light cycle to 12, 12, 12 hours of darkness. Right. Start by pulling a black tarp over some structure of the greenhouse. Right. Mm -hmm. Initiate 12 and 12 in May. So you're pulling your crop out in uh, July sometime. And then uh, you still got time to veg. You don't really need to run lights if you, if you get your next crop planted. They'll veg out and then you can either let them finish mm -hmm. uh, under the natural uh, day length in October or you can... They're to size and where you want them. You can flip them again and pull those late varieties in early October as opposed to late October. Flower power, bro. That's right. All solar still. No, we, uh, I, I definitely, I ran electricity to the, uh, to the greenies this year, the new ones I built. Mm -hmm. It's nice to have power. I mean, solar's great, but man, it's nice to have power when you need it and you can just plug something in and make it work. <laughs> solar was good up on the hillside because the uh, running power up there would have been costly, but. You know, now that I'm down in the valley, you know, there's a there's a telephone pole right there. There's, you know, power's right there. I can get ag power now. Mm -hmm. You know, it's ideally I'd like I'd like to offset it with uh with some renewable energy in the future, but you still got a solar powered well or no. I was kind of gravity powered before up on the hillside with the Oh. Yeah. With the spring up at the top of the hill. It would just flow right down to the greenhouse. Oh right, right. Yeah. Oh, beautiful Mother Nature. Yeah. So hey, it's a great time for us to take a little break. We'll be right back. This is uh, Chip and Jeff, The Real Dirt. try to have like a little pick me up because we're smoking lots of weed here and uh you know lately it's been some type of like physical feat today we, we like saw how many pull-ups we could do with taking uh rips off this huge joint that jeff rolled and, and jeff man outdoor grower he totally beat me more more push-ups i mean more pull-ups but uh, uh i had more puffs i had more puffs definitely got me on that pull puffs pull puffs how many did you end up doing 13 13 <laughs> <laughs> well, I tell you, you know, uh, Jeff might not be the uh, the winner of the pull up push up award, but you know, he definitely is for bringing jars of weed to the Real Dirt podcast. Here we go with studio audience claps, yay, yay! Jeff always brings jars of weed, and uh, today he brought a, a a handful of great strains here. What'd you bring us today, Jeff? I brought wedding cake, which has been super popular this year. Really nice weed, nice flavor, and once it and once it cures out, it really does have that frosting smell to it, like a like a supermarket white frosting birthday cake. Frosty, smelly cookie, a cookie mm. triangle cross. Let me get some more of that. Mm. Mm. Wow, well, it smells aromatic. Looks great. Calyx development, awesome. Light in color, really good color. Yeah, uh, crystally. Uh, purpled up a little bit with the uh, bit. my eyes is going a bit but you the know cooler s september weather mm -hmm. that was a late depth pull oh uh, yeah it looks looks as good mm -hmm. as any indoor would look yeah great job dude honestly i think that a little bit of power might have helped you maybe mm -hmm. <laughs> 
So what else we got? We got White Tahoe Cookies. Oh yeah, that was one of the WTC. That's that's been real popular around the farm uh, for smoking. Mm, I can see that was just mm-hmm. we just ran a couple of testers of that one. Just got the cut. This is the white. This that summer. made it made it girth out a bit, huh? With the white. Uh, man, I'm not sure. I didn't see a whole lot of white in it when I was growing it. It definitely you can definitely tell it was a cookies cross. But uh, I don't know. It's been real popular. Great high. Orange cookies, but another popular one. Uh, orange cookies. What's the orange on it? The orange is, well, it's supposedly orange juice. Orange. Something called orange juice bud. And I smell the orange juice. I, I, de- I don't know what that is, but I'm, I'm, I'm guessing it's something Calio related. Mm, Calio. Yeah, this smells great. It's very, it's, it's very or- orangey. It's quite pungent. There's lots of orangey in it. Yeah. It's like a kind of an artificial orange chemical smelling thing. Mm-hmm. Real flavorful. Another good. Good cookies cross, even though it doesn't smell like cookies, which which actually I prefer. OG Twist, yeah, OG which is, Twist. Uh, is a, a good one here. OG Chem Dog Cross, super potent. Oh, it smells like rotten feet. Yeah, mm, mm. and Kush. Yeah, rotten feet Kush. It's uh oh, I mean it <laughs> stinks. I mean it well, really stinks. I always thought it smelled a little bit like an overchlorinated hot tub. Oh man, it's like disgusting. Disgustingly cushy, <laughs> stinky. Like now, I just think toe jam and cush together. Oh, it's t- we're gonna have to totally roll that up. Mm. Yeah. Wow, that one's a head wow. ringer. Wow, that's probably the mm. most potent one. That one's great. Mm-hmm. And then the Z King Z Skittles. Oh, Skittles, Skittles with a Z. Yeah. And that one is a, mm. another tester we did this year. It has been a real hyped up strain, and man, it is. I smell like is, is there Kim Dog in here? Nah, I don't think so. It's so flavorful. I don't know what it is. I smell that like it's that putrid Kim Dog smell on it though. To me, it smells like a grapefruit peel. Oh, you know, it's funny how like people can say like at the right time when I'm smelling something and they'll say what smell it, it smells yeah. like cherries. Yeah. Like, oh wow, it smells like fucking yeah. cherries. Right, right. Yeah, it's it's it a, smells like cleaner it's of a, some sort though. Um, like clean like ammonia. Like think of lime Skittles mm, when you smell it. Yeah, disgusting synthetic it's, uh, green smelling. It it definitely smells synthetic. It uh Wow. Candy smell. It's so flavorful. It's just absolutely a joy to smoke. Damn. And uh, it's just something that it's just such a shit. Now, how many now? When you, now, be honest. When you wake up in the morning, how many joints of this do you smoke before you get going? Uh, zero. <laughs> it's, I, only, I only break it out to impress people. Oh you shit! Oh you shit! <laughs> it's a it's a shit plant to grow, but uh, I'm gonna figure it out because it is so damn tasty. Well, let's see which one. I'm, I mean, I'm dude. I'm going with this OG shit. That's just yeah. OG that's that's, that's your flavor for sure. Oh yeah, just getting it ready here. So, uh, what's the market difference between this year and last year? Mm-hmm. I'd say it's a total one hundred and eighty. I think prices are almost half of what they were last year. Maybe a little more than half, but you know, they they took a huge hit. Lowest to the highest is half. Half you mean like like nine hundred bucks? Yeah, bucks. like if you're getting eighteen this year, you might be getting nine this year. Mm-hmm. You might be getting eleven. But if you're getting 18 last year, yeah, you ain't you ain't seeing 18 anymore. So, do you, the, the, now now why 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 is there such a flood of weed in the market right now? Because it's not none of it's few very little of it's legal. Right? Yeah. Oh oh yeah. I'm, I'm none of it's legal technically, according to who you ask. They'll say no. There's no legal weed in California. Mm-hmm. It's a couple of things. It's production's gone up just like it has every year, but it's gone up at such a tick because people have local licenses such as myself that they can now invest in infrastructure and feel more comfortable doing that and, and up their production. That's not why it's so cheap though. It's so cheap because so many people think it's the last hurrah and they are blown it the fuck out. There's definitely that. That's part of it. Last time we saw a big price dip like this was 11 o- was 010 when prop 19 was was about and mm-hmm. people panicked and uh you know prices took like a 500 dollar hit that year well they've, they've taken more than a 500 hundred dollar hit this year but i think it's both that sort of just preparing and thinking it's the end along with this wave of massive production not just in california everywhere okay 
So I see where you're coming from, but I see it a little different, right? Do you know how many licenses came up in Trinity County? I think right now there's a hundred or so. A hundred licenses with 10,000 square feet. Yeah. That's not where the overproduction's coming from, right. though. That's not where the overproduction's coming from. Neither it is in, in Humboldt. Not coming a, from Humboldt either. A thousand licenses that are in play, not right. even like get been issued. In, right. Right. Yeah. Just in play. Yeah. I think a, right? literally a hundred have been issued in Trinity and 500 are maybe in play. So that don't have anything to do no. with it. Nothing. Right. Right. It's everybody else who, God bless their souls. <laughs> hey, you can't right. knock them for growing more weed. No. Hey, man, go for it, dude. Right. Here's what's going on. In the past, there's been this like medical defense. Right. And right. that's how everybody's grown so much weed here is they have this medical defense to say that, hey, this is medical. Yep. Well, this year, that's going away. This is the last year of it. Supposedly. Right. Supposedly. Supposedly. So... So many people are just are blowing it out or going under that pretense that, hey, this is medical, right? Right. Nobody's gotten in trouble so far. And how can they catch everybody now? Everybody's blowing the fuck out. Yeah. How do they know who's legal and not? Tough to put the cat back in the bag at this point. It, it is. It is. Impossible, really. I don't know. I mean, Humboldt's handling it in a way and there's fish and game that's handling it away. And like Humboldt, for instance, supposedly they're issuing letters of non-compliance. So if you have a garden that they've identified somehow and they send you a letter and say, hey, man, this is an unregulated cannabis garden and you owe us $10,000 a day that it's in operation. Yeah. Right. That's a way to regulate it. If they can enforce it, it's never been an <laughs> issue of rules. It's always been an issue of, you know, they can make all the rules they want, but if they can't enforce them, you well, get you, know, you get what we got now. But before it was never like a money game to people, right? It was like, okay, they're going to come and chop down my weed and I might get arrested and I get three years probation. Sure. Might. Oh, you know. Right. Right. You know, that wasn't a big deal. But when people are like, well, fuck, here's a $300,000 fine for mm. being an operation for a month yep. levied against my property like there ain't no way you're getting out of that one right i mean you i know, mean yeah no, you, you know lawyers and, you and know. accountants maybe can beg forgiveness for you but you know yeah, that's, <laughs> like, that's just gonna cost you more um yeah it's, it's time to it, for humboldt county it's time to reconsider what the game plan is for that how it all works out who knows but uh um you know if i don't know it's, it's just there's so many variables and just like growing weed, it's just figuring oh, it's just out, great. figuring out what your variables is. Which ones you roll up? So twist. OG twist, man. Yeah. Oh, this shit's bomber. Mm. God damn. That tastes great, dude. I hope so. Mm. It's my entry for golden tarps. I love the golden tarps. If anybody out there was listening and it, maybe it's past November 18th, maybe who knows when you're right. listening to this, but sure. like golden tarp awards it's in Southern Humboldt, Garberville or maybe Redway and like it's a, it's a great great cannabis competition old school original cannabis competition first light depth competition first light depth competition and uh ever since I started pulling tarps I mean I knew from the first crop that it was the future and and everybody's pretty much figured it out now but but uh yeah it's nice to see them uh dedicate some <laughs> Pulled my first tarp in 010. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Spent six months pulling tarp. It was, it was great. It was a great opportunity. Spent six months pulling tarp. Yeah. That's right. Now now youngsters have to pay for that. When they come <laughs> up here, they have to pay. Right. Yeah. You used to get paid for it, but now if people want to come work for you, they have to pay for their internship. Is that what you're working <sighs> <laughs> Yeah, I got woofers paying me to stay. Yeah, yeah, right, right, right. Maybe someday. Once I can get so, organically certified. So, man, let's talk about what's going on here, man. This energy that's in the air about the, like, change, the previous black market cannabis, you know, that was being produced on a huge scale. Like, sure. You know, sure. 12, so, 13,000 farms worth in Humboldt County right alone. Right. Like, uh, probably thousand of them are becoming, mm -hmm. have applications in, Right. Right, those aren't all. Those aren't our cultivation applications yeah, but, too. Yeah, let's say it's let's say cultivation's half of it. Sure, at least right. right that's five hundred farms out of thirteen thousand. Right, it's right. not much of a dent, huh? I don't know. I mean, depending on what those thirteen thousand farms produce, the farms are definitely going to be bigger on average because nobody was doing an acre five years ago. At least nobody I know. Maybe somebody did. 
Yeah, maybe not all in one place. Yeah, there you go. Not right. all, definitely not all in one place. Mm -hmm. Quarter acre here. Quarter definitely. Acre here. Yeah, okay. Sure, sure. There's definitely yeah. people doing acres than just, whew, that's a long summer. <laughs> yeah, so what we were saying, this OG twist has got me st and you stoned, even though you're not hitting it. Getting the contact. Contact. Right. Uh, yeah, OG Chem Dog. It's been a it's been a favorite favorite of mine to smoke and grow for uh, quite a few years now. It's been a staple. And is this is still the clone? Or are you planting seed? It's it's a clone. And it's a CSI seed. It's a seed a guy popped and passed it to a, to a clone producer in uh, mm -hmm. Southern Humboldt, and uh, he passed it around. And I kind of put two and two together that this guy was selling the same clone. I got I had got it from CSI Humboldt. Mm -hmm. he, he got his hands on it early on mm -hmm. and it was really impressive the first time I ran it. It was, I mean, I, I, I got mild hallucinations the first time I smoked it. Ooh, hold on. Let me hit some more of it. Yeah. Little, little purple and blue flutters. All right. I only took a couple of hits of it. But we're going to get some blue flutters here. It was, it was quite a thing. I start to zone out and the Man. conversation just keep talking. Test super high in THC and terpenes. Usually overall percentage is usually, you know, two, three, four percent. I've had it as high as four. Always tests, you know, 26, 27 percent THC. Uh, I've seen it as high as 29, not by me, but by another skilled grower. And uh, it's, you know, if you're looking for raw potency and some good Kush flavor, it's a winner. It's good for the grower, too. Yields well. It's real manageable. Mm -hmm. Not prone to mold. Chunks up. Nice long colas as opposed to like your typical... Uh, kind of og golf ball branches too potent for some people not for you yeah no bro <laughs> i'm waiting for the hallucinations man mm. oh it's been stony being back here in humboldt though that's for damn sure man yeah it came back just in time for the first rain mm -hmm. perfect time of year it's pretty nice here on the coast i don't make it down here a lot but you know the mist coming up from the ocean so i was right. coming over the hill and and uh it's it's pretty nice it is nice when I think of Humboldt, I think of this. I think of this. Yeah, yeah totally. Yeah, we're looking out at the Redwood Forest here at the uh, Humboldt Real Dirt Studios. Some huge old growth trees right here behind us of both fir and redwood origin. We're in a really interesting spot here that grows both inland and coastal species. But uh, today it looks straight coastal. Definitely. So what we were talking about, before I got stoned and the broom got stoned is how the legalization is really going to affect what's going on. Right. So let's paint the scenario, man. The scenarios changed a couple of times over the last year. It seems like they come out with a set of laws, something happens, they throw them out, whether it's a draft, they change or obviously with the passage of uh, recreational, they took their medical laws and just kind of uh, combined the two. So stuff from both sides changed and now there's like kind of one set of laws and, you know, this trailer bill that was supposed to combine them is, is like a whole new thing to read. Yeah, totally. No, um, no, the June trailer bill. Right. So, mm -hmm. you know, I thought I was caught up, you know, trailer bill comes out. I realized I got to relearn, reread everything. Um, and now just how they're going to implement it come 2018 when... Nobody has a license, a state license yet. Nobody has track and trace system put in Most place. Most people don't have their local licenses mm -hmm. straightened out. They want them. They're ready to get them. Yep. But the locales haven't rolled out ordinances. Most mm -hmm. of them just decide to ban because it's fast and easy. Mm -hmm. And they don't realize that they're like, they're, they're allowing the black market to thrive. They're allowing all these kind of sort of, unregulated delivery services to continue operation because only only unregulated delivery services will be able to provide weed to the customer if uh, somebody with a regulated delivery service or wants to make a regulated delivery service can't do it right so if the city or the municipality bans all deliveries that's all you get is unregulated deliveries well it all depends if there's an option that's a legal option though it will push the private option out eventually. Yeah, they'll wise up if eventually. It's a real option, but it's they're a real option, right? So, but so they make okay. For instance, so they make delivery illegal in Arcata and Eureka, but there's like ten dispensaries you can go into. Right. Right. And then like okay, well, you know, I'm sure there's somebody who's going to hustle private market delivery, but as we've seen in Oregon, Washington, Colorado, the like private cannabis sales 
you know, individual sales of small amounts start to go away, right? And there's still wholesale private production, right? But it's not like people buying eighths or ounces or grams anymore. So like the couch dealers go away. For the most right? part. For and, the most part. And it and might not be like overnight. Not overnight, right? but I'm talking in areas, there's large swaths of the Bay Area that are just banned. The counties ban mm-hmm. it. The municipality, the local cities, yeah, those it. couch dealers are going to sit there because that's the that's the old that's the the dispensary is the couch dealer, right? 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 Somebody comes into somebody's living room, they give them a sack of weed on their couch, right? Right? And then and that's the the delivery service is the new couch dealer mm-hmm. because you you get your your service up on you know on, up on weed maps or wherever you may be. Mm-hmm. People think they're just ordering. Medical just or whatever. Medical or this, that, or the other thing. And anybody that is actually regulated and licensed won't be able to deliver to those spots. It'll only be unregulated deliveries delivering. Mm-hmm. It'll only be couch dealers. Yeah. Absolutely. And if people want to drive through Bay Area traffic to Oakland or Berkeley or wherever to get their sack, that's fine. They'll do it. But, you know, that's and so not going to happen. couch dealers that remain, the mm-hmm. delivery dealers that remain, the black market dealers that remain. Right. Right. They're being facilitated by bands, basically. Right. They're being facilitated by bands. And as soon as you get rid of those bands, you get rid of those guys. So if the area is banned, then they get private market cannabis. So like of the, you know, 12,500 farms that are private here uh, still in Humboldt County alone. Right. Right. They get their cannabis from those people. More or less. Right. That would be it. Right. They'll get a a broker will come up, buy cannabis and go sell it to them or they'll get small amounts here and there. Yeah. I mean, there's right. a, there's enough small producers around now that, I mean, who knows where these places are getting it from, but yeah. Right. So, I mean, they're, they're keeping the black market alive in California as, as best they can. It sounds like with the prohibitionist attitude, you know, it's the same way across the country pretty much. So what happens when it's say model County, what happens in, let's just talk about Humboldt County. Okay. Okay. Model, say it's a model County. Okay. And they've now like readily issued as many permits as people will apply for that are zoned appropriate. Okay. Right. They've now generated some tax revenue. They've generated mm-hmm. fees. Mm-hmm. They're able to get money from the state for enforcement of the uh, private right. operators. Right. Which is going to hurt them. They, all, all, all the issues, all the complaints, a lot of the maybe not so nice sides of this industry will probably start vanishing. What do you mean by that? Well, you know, this industry has attracted great people oh, to Humboldt. Right. This industry has attracted the exact opposite as well. Right. Absolutely. And, you know, well, but just, you got the good it, and the bad. Okay. Yeah. It, it, start, it starts to change the dynamic of it. Sure. Right. So the way I see it is this, is like it, it, if, it, if they can regulate the C to sale, the metric system, right. in, to, to all the people that have signed up to be legal... 2018 sometime. Right. Because that's going to happen sometime, 2018. Right. So if they do that, then that means if you're in that system, it's going to be real difficult to be able to bring weed in from the private market. Now, I know they're criminals. I know there's there's not sure. even criminals, but crafty people who want to manipulate that system. Sure. Right. But for the most part, right, this is what this means. If you are in the legal system then you can only sell to other people in the legal system, right? You can only buy from other people in the legal system. Right. Right. That's how it's right? supposed to be. That's how it's supposed to be. Right. Right. So like if, if I'm a dispensary in San Francisco and I've been buying weed from a broker who comes up and gets weed and brings it down to him mm-hmm. or individuals walk in their door and say, Hey, I got two, three, four, five, six, ten 10 pounds of weed. Yep. Right. So that goes away now well, and they have to go to through through some sort of legal mechanism to obtain their weed. Right. And all how that transitions to the legal mechanism is all up in the air right now. Yeah, right. Absolutely. It's going to be a you're going to get temporary license until they can review applications. There's going to be a grace period where you can do both. You can still buy it from vendors off the street. Or you can get it from a distributor. Right. It's not going to be like a light switch, like we said earlier. It's not going to be a light switch because that would, at this point, would bring the industry to a screeching halt. Mm -hmm. Uh, And I was kind of hoping it was, you know, I'm sitting on a a big harvest and and, uh, 
you know, see that price yeah. skyrocket like it did temporarily in Washington and Colorado, right. I, I would not mind. Especially for the dispensaries because they can they can acquire you know cannabis from any place because it's still unregulated. Right. Right. So private market, you know, so they're regulated market. So all the private right. market people that aren't going through like right the costs. Sure. You know, we're they, able to benefit still. Sure. And, uh, you know, the, and, and the other side of the problem is a lot of these dispensaries are operating in the gray area, just like the rest of us. So a lot of dispensaries in Southern California don't have a business license or don't have any type of permission to be doing what they're doing. And they're going to mm-hmm. go away. Mm-hmm. You would think, right. Mm-hmm. Or they're not, you're not going to be able to sell to however many clubs there are in, in Southern California, right. only a handful of them are actually going to be licensed. Right. right you know, right. It's, so how do they enforce that too? Because, right. you know, I mean, I there's, guess there's nobody to sell. Well, here's it. how they enforce it. They, here's how they enforce it is they just like bust some big people and some small people that sure. are, that are, aren't playing the game and, and those other people like get scared and roll out of it. Yeah, I mean, they've been busting people since this all started, and it yeah, hasn't, hasn't kept, seemed to yeah, stop. Yeah, but they kept having that the medical defense, and now they don't sure. have that. Sure, They're sure. They're like, oh, you had a legal mechanism to do it. We gave you opportunity, time, and rhyme and reason to do it, and you didn't do it, right? So yeah. it's, a, it's a different it's a different time. It, it certainly is. It's a, how, how it actually ends up happening. I mean, I'm sitting here. I, I've, I've got legit or supposedly legit places to... Um, then my product, I mean, come 2018, I'm paying taxes on it. You know, I still don't know how it's all going to roll out. And it's, you know, it's mid October. Right. I'm in the middle of my fall harvest. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, I, it, the, the path is unclear how it's all going to roll out. Am I going to be able to transport it to the dispensary? Am I going to have to find a transporter? And I mean, that, that just doesn't work to send, you know, five pounds down to a dispensary and pay a transport a thousand bucks. Mm-hmm. That didn't make sense. It doesn't work. Well, it's also going to be legal then. So like, you know, you know, legal, you know, if, if, if uh, forest service pulls me over, I'm just as illegal as I always was. If CHP pulls me over and I got some paperwork to show I'm doing the right thing, maybe they let me go. If they want to roll me up though, they can. Same with any County sheriff, any <laughs> municipality of multiple municipalities I drive through. It's mm-hmm. just, it's just up to them. Do I get pulled over by task force or do I get pulled over by CHP or do I get pulled over by, you know, mm-hmm. a, a city cop, you know, just mm-hmm. it's, it's a total clusterfuck and the way they design the program to prevent diversion, to, to be highly regulated. It's almost like they forgot about how they were going to roll it out and how slow it was going to be to roll out. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, you know, who's got a distribution license? There aren't many yet. You know, who's got a transport license? There's, there aren't many yet. Why mm-hmm. should a small cultivator have to jump through all these hoops just to get their product to market? Well, I mean, you know, it's not that many hoops necessarily, man. The hoops it, aren't there it, to it, jump through, though. It, the hoop, That's okay, the problem. They, 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 right. There you go. It's the transition into I gotta, this new market. Yeah. And, man, like the, the private market, the private cannabis market hasn't had any regulation to deal with right and man business is like that's how businesses work is through regulation to some degree you know there's hours you can work there's ways you have to treat your employees there's minimums that you have to like give your employees from from wage to sure to health and human safety issues and like no one's had to do that in the past because it's this private cannabis industry, but like a, any other business does. Right. right. But I, I don't have every other business has a pretty easy way to get their products to market has a, mm-hmm. you know, it's, it's, it's just, there's to get from point A to point well, B, all the, all the steps aren't there yet. Yeah. I, I get it. I, know? I get that. I get that, you know, and, talking to people about their insurance or their landlord or their banking. They, (laughs) they all, they all say it. They hear these same things is like firearms and alcohol, right? They're all similar things that that people don't want to bank with and lend for, you know, like big, good luck getting a line of credit on a liquor store or, or, you know, a firearm store or, you know, a weed shop. Yeah. Right. Same thing. It's not solely cannabis that's treated this way. Right. You know, we're definitely hot topic right now. Sure. Definitely a hot topic. It's uh, every, everybody rolls out a uh, hot article at least every day to, 
to get those clicks and yeah, views. Yeah. Price is dropping. Legal weeds not legal weeds be, coming. Legal weeds here, and look what it's done. Fire wiped out all of NorCal's crop. Yeah, totally. You know, awful you know. fire, awful fire. Not to belittle it at oh, all, but like devas- you know, devastating, devastating. And uh, to, fires like that usually don't happen in populated areas. To a lot of good people, it was just the perfect blend of end of the dry season, windstorm, and. Uh, the October's fires mm-hmm. in Sonoma County. It, uh, and, and Mendo. 2017. Redwood Valley got hit. Potter Valley. Yeah, you know, we were, yeah, let's speak of the fires for a second. I've uh, been trying not to really talk so much about it because, you know, I don't like to uh, harp on negative vibes, bro. But uh, we're going to send positive vibes out to all the people affected by the fires. However, there's an agricultural like aspect here. Let's say Mendocino alone. Redwood Valley and Potter Valley. Valley. Potter yeah. Valley. These are also wine re- regions. Right. Huge cannabis production areas. Huge cannabis, huge, huge right. grape production. So, you know, Hearst, right? That area. Uh right? yeah, a little south of there, little down south of down there. Tomkai, Redwood Valley. So Tomkey Hill. Up that east side of Tomkai. Tomkai. Uh, over to Potter Valley, over the hill to mm-hmm. Potter Valley. Mm-hmm. Some well-established vineyards got hit hard. A lot of folks, a mm-hmm. lot of families, mom and pops, people trying spending money trying to get licensed and and, and get their properties situated to to move forward. Uh, got completely wiped out, and uh, you know most of them don't have insurance on their greenhouses or on their crop, no, or no, just or they were, it all. or they were renting, and and you know yeah, just it's a kick to the gut for sure for a lot of folks. And the nice side of it is to see how many people have stepped up and helped out. I know I offered my house down there up to a guy who got burnt out and uh, I think he's taking advantage of it. I mean, whatever I can do, whatever little thing I can do to help a grower get back on his feet, who's certainly deserving of it. A guy I looked up to for his skill and, and abilities, you know, just anything I can do to help out a fellow grower. I'm, I'm with it. Rough times. That's for sure. There it's a, uh, you know, huge economic impact all throughout that area and, you know, just the structures taken out. Like, yeah. Wow. Just the sheer number of, of things that are going to have to be rebuilt in the coming years. And, you know, it's going to push so much of the labor force out too. It's like, you got to figure out how to build it now. A lot of people had construction years this year, just like I did and building stuff out and, and now they got to do it again next year. And mm-hmm. it's, it's going to be tough. Like, you know, funds are going to be probably were already tight at most places, you know, investment in mm-hmm. uh into infrastructure and and now for this to happen it's 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 kind of kicking people at the worst time at the end of the season all the money's been spent waiting for that crop to come in Mm -hmm. and then boom no crop no greenhouse no house you know right right right. that's worse than like an early rain year it's worse than early rain it's worse than getting raided at least they don't burn your house down (laughs) yeah i know yeah i know so one of one of my friends said yeah man i mean i just kind of like getting busted. I was like, yeah, well, at least this way, like all oh, you're all, you dealt with it all at once and it's just gone. Yeah. Right. When you get, you get busted, you got to deal with it over a <laughs> period of time. <laughs> right. It's like, yeah, it's, it's no, a, you know, this way it's just like bandage off. Right. But right. same way you thought you had, you, it, know, you lost it all. Yeah. It's going to, it's going to be tough on a lot of people. I hope, I hope it doesn't break anybody and they're able to find enough help to get, to get a crop planted again next year. I hope, I hope the counties step up and, and realize that if they want mm-hmm. this industry, they're going to have to help these people out and maybe relax a couple of things. It's uh you know, it's, it's, it's tough to have a house, uh, you know, if you're required to have a permitted house, you know, for your grow, which a lot of counties have done, it's tough to do that once your house burnt down, you know, what are you, mm-hmm. you going to rebuild it with? You might not have had insurance if you were renting, you might, uh, might not have been insurable. Absolutely. You know? Absolutely. I mean, you know, just tons of grow infrastructure that, mm-hmm. you know, takes time to put together years Absolutely. of putting together. You never have enough all at once. You to gotta it, right? start mm-hmm. over from square one pretty much. Yeah. Gotta buy new water tanks, new line, new maybe your soil's still there, but the smart pot around it burnt. Yeah, mm-hmm. I mean, you're right, man. You're totally right. Like it just you just it's start tough. from zero. Like some of those people won't be able to start by. And if you yeah, and if right. you if you had, you know, your life savings in your house somewhere. Well, so like I mean that coupled with this new cannabis regulation lowering lowering in price because you got you got a couple ways. Like people like, yeah. oh, it's I gotta go regu- I gotta go legal, but I can't or don't want to do that. No, the price mm-hmm. is dropping. 
so low that it doesn't make sense to do it. Yeah, it's, right. you know, there's not going to be that huge windfall. The, the margins are tighter and they're just mm-hmm. going to get, continue to get tighter. And you're not just going to be able to fund that with a, with a nice light, light, light dev harvest, you know? Yeah, right. It's uh it's going to take years to get back to where you were possibly. And, you know, the, the small farmer, the 10,000 square foot guy just can't afford to build out the ultimate greenhouse, you know, mm-hmm. in one year, you know, maybe one year you get the structure up next year, you get some heat. You know, mm-hmm. next year you get some lights or get electricity ran to it. It's mm-hmm. a, you know, for the independent guy, farmer, family, um, it's a process of, of building yeah. things up. You know, it's, and, and that's a lot of what's up here. It's not, it's not all outside interests coming in and blowing it out. It's the same guys that have been doing it for decades. There are new people every day that show up here, you sure. know, every single day. Mm-hmm. And, you know, they got, they got the dream. That's right. Right. And yeah. Keep your dream alive. We all did. Keep the dream alive. Yeah. It's it's very much alive still and it's just it just changes. You gotta figure out what, what the next step is and uh, and go go hundred percent. Well hey, you know, hundred percent I think it's a great place to take a break. Real dirt, chip Jeff. We'll be right back. Cultivators, Trinity County, newly legal cannabis. Has the new has has uh has this has this new innovation changed your grow technique at all? I don't grow large outdoor plants anymore. I, mm-hmm. I gave that up. That made sense when you needed to keep your plant numbers low. Mm-hmm. When you're allotted a square footage, so you ditch the outdoor. But are you still growing the same way in your light depth? The same way in the light depth. Mm-hmm. I, that's that's what I spent the last few years kind of working out and uh you know every 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 year is a, a new challenge and this this year certainly presented quite a few but uh 15 gallon pot 20s 20 gallon pot yeah one Sh- plant a pot yeah one plant usually half pound a pot shooting for a half pound depending on the strain how tall are these plants when you get a half pound? well sitting in the pot they're maybe a little taller than me Mm-hmm. Depending on the strain, again, the cushions, the the stretchers, they'll they'll definitely end up taller than me. The wedding cake, the cookies, they'll they'll end up about my height. I'm five and six feet tall. I'm six three, so the pot, mm-hmm. you figure they're sitting, you know, fifteen, eighteen inches above the ground in mm-hmm. the pot. So they're, yeah, they're like five foot plants. Yeah, four five foot plants. Yeah, sh- shooting for a half a pound. Um, mm-hmm. Four foot plants. Five yeah, foot plants. something like that, and. Mm-hmm. uh you, t- you most you top most of these no i i don't i don't top certain varieties i will if i know it well and i think it'll work to help fill out the space and if i got the if i feel like i'm on schedule and have the extra veg time to let them get to height but uh mm-hmm. most of them most of them i don't top you make your soil uh i, I re-amend the same soil every year okay um, so but you, this year you add it on yeah i, I right. took i took my old outdoor soil oh okay and okay. uh okay. basically you made a big pile and you test it and amend it or made, what? made a big pile tested it pretty much was so add nitrogen it was about what i thought it was add nitrogen more calcium um a little, little bit more everything but certainly yeah. calcium nitrogen anything that's going to get leached by the rain mm-hmm. uh, which is a whole new thing they, they, they won't be getting leached by the rain anymore in the greenhouse right in a mm-hmm. greenhouse covered if they're not in a greenhouse that's a big thing uh is uh you know once the rains come keeping keep, keeping any uh runoff no matter if you're organic or synthetic you, you want to keep that nitrogen and phosphorus out of the streams potassium Absolutely. and uh, so that's that's a big thing california is working on and teaching people how to do that you gotta have zero runoff dude zero zero you, sh- you shouldn't have much runoff anyways during the year zero you know you're not watering the ground you're watering mm-hmm. the pots re you know, it every year put back in what it needs mix it up pull two crops out of it flush it out in between maybe add a top dress for the second crop depending on how how long it's going or what the strain is you buy commercially available nutrients to mend your product i buy a bulk mixed product from soilscape 
based on your product or, or based on your needs or um i'll, I'll have i'll do a t- i'll do i'll do a soil test and, and kind of have them make a custom blend ah. f- for that soil test and i'm working with kind of the same soil in every greenhouse so mm-hmm. i just i just need to get it in the ballpark of what it needs and right, right. They, they stay pretty happy yeah i've tried to get sam on a few times uh hadn't quite quite made it happen yeah i'd love to hear that episode yeah yeah totally i hope to get him on while i'm in town i'm only i'm here for a few more weeks yeah you're vegging these plants till they're two foot tall so we take cuts in march or april mm-hmm. veg them up under t5s in four inches bring them out to the nursery greenhouse beginning of april mm-hmm. veg them out in there mm-hmm. in two gallons so you end up with a maybe 18 inch plant rooted out two gallon pot Put that into a into the flowering greenhouses, twenty gallons, twenty gallon pots. Uh, veg them a little bit more in those larger pots. Get them to fill the space out, and knowing based on the strain and, and whatnot, you know how long they need and how big they're going to get, and uh, flip them. How many square feet do these plants take up? About nine or ten, de- de- depending on the strain, depending on how tight the pots are. But so does that put you at an ounce square foot? Maybe run some numbers on that. Oh shit! Here we go. We got the calculator out. That's right. Uh, wow, I have never seen such a pocket calculator. This one's got you know, like the whole thing. Yield, yield kind of is what it is. I've, I've I've never been so concerned with maximizing my yield. I'd rather maximize my quality. Yeah, and know I had that space filled out properly. Right. I didn't have a bunch of greenhouse floor mm-hmm. lit up by the sun. Almost an ounce a square foot. So it's a uh, one ounce a square foot. That would be a good goal to shoot for. It might mm-hmm. it might be slightly under that, but it's it's close. Mm-hmm. Depends on the strain. Depends on the time of year. Mm-hmm. Depends on the weather. Ten thousand square feet, ten thousand ounces. Hell yeah! Yeah, sounding good. Gonna roll all that into joints. Maybe someday. Yeah, sling, sling uh, dollar joints. I don't know. Uh, I'd love to, uh, <laughs> I, hey, I, I love, I'd love to sell pre-rolls at some point and uh, get them all packaged up in a pack. Oh, half a joint A's. Your joints would be pretty small. I think that'd probably be pretty good for most of America. Well, yeah. Graham joints. <laughs> point eight. Point, point eight. eight. Point eight joints. Yeah, totally. Oh, shit. So, uh, yeah, man, this is, this has been a, a fine episode of uh the real dirt i think we've we've covered almost almost everything do we miss anything here we want to talk about like politics and want to talk about the future you know i don't know if i got a clear future prediction can you give me a future prediction in like a few sentences it, you know the future is price so- is going to rise price is going to drop for legal cannabis it's going to temporarily rise oh, it's going to get well i hope so it's the future is so unclear right now Right, right. It's going to go up slightly. There's going to be more taxes and fees. So your margins aren't going to go up possibly, but maybe Mm -hmm. it helps absorb a little bit of that blow. Yeah, yeah. At least initially. Mm -hmm. A lot of people that thought the legal path was the way to go are are, are probably regretting it or realizing it's not. Mm -hmm. Some of the people with their with their shit together and and some of the most talented growers out there are going to are going to do okay. Yeah, right. And it's not going to be easy. It's not going to be what it was, but man, nothing that good lasts. Yeah, right. right. So, you know, hey, it's a new day. If 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 you want to farm, then get to farming. If you're looking just to bullshit right away, well, you know, it's time to get off. Called out. Damn. There's the future. <laughs> well, if I tell you the future's bright, man, I think it's going to look a lot like Canada did 10 years ago. I think it's going to... Uh, really change the way a bunch of cannabis has grown for sure. I think the technology is going to change. I think people are really going to start to think about gram per square foot and, you know, what's really going on, how they're going to sell it, what they're going to do with it. So it's coming, man. If that's all that matters is gram a square foot, it's certainly going to be one way if, you know, does quality matter? You know, it's, does it have to be good or does it have to be good enough? Yeah, that, yeah, right. And right, that's right. kind of always been the commercial producer's thing is it just needs to be good enough. Yeah, in California, man, well, the consumer has always been like a well-informed consumer. It's, we'll see how that changes with all the, uh, you know, all, all the new people coming into the market, all the tourists. And you, you go to a, you go to a lot of clubs and, and you don't see a lot of good cannabis on the shelf and... Yeah, but and, you can go to like organic can. You can go. You can go I've to the right like, clubs and, and find yeah, incredible right, cannabis. Right, and I've had delivery. You know where they were. At least like they checked my my medical. 
yeah. card, and, you know, some interesting path. I don't think it's over. I think it's just begun, right? It's a different world. There's different margins. There are different rules to play by. But if you really want to be involved with cannabis, if that's why you want to be involved with it, then... You know, it's a great place to be. If you just want to make money, maybe oh, yeah. like timber or construction or real estate or Bitcoin is a better way to go. Right. If you just want to grow your own and have fun growing it, you can do that legally. Yeah. And right. you can go about your business and not worried about mm-hmm. getting hassled. Those skilled gardeners are going to have some of the best weed around. Yeah, absolutely. Come smoke me out on it. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Awesome. Well, this has been another fine episode of The Real Dirt. I'd like to thank uh, Jeff for joining us today on The Real Dirt. Thank you, Chip. Yeah, if you can uh, download this and other episodes of The Real Dirt at therealdirt.com or Real Dirt Podcast on iTunes. I'd like to thank our sponsors, Cultivate Colorado and Growers Soil and Nutrients. They've uh, kindly provided many resources to make this episode possible. I'd also like to thank you, the listener. Thank you for lending me your time and ear and uh, listen to me and my friend Jeff Babble. This has been The Real Dirt. Mm-hmm.